Hello friends, welcome to the Legion Raid guide series featuring Thea Mine. This guide would not have been possible without the support of my community. They will all be listed at the back of this video on the credits. With that, let's get started right away. Thea Mine has 3 gates on normal, 4 gates on hard. They can be entered at 1610 and 1630 eye level. Gate 1 and 2 are fairly comfortable, but 3 and 4 are very difficult. Upon beating the gates, you receive Dark Fire, a material needed to transcend your armors. Auction items in the raid are a little bit different. It's basically a token item to retry your Transcend minigames. The first level is where the clear race is held. Eye level 1630 is the requirement, and you need to clear Hard Mold first. This is a 2 gate roster based raid with 1 time clear rewards. Gate 1 Kilanessa is a demon type boss with 180 HP bars with 2 phases. Destruction bombs and at least one person needs a dark bomb. Time stop or Adrofin slash stimulant is a choice and I will explain later where it can be utilized. I will suggest Adrofin and stimulant for supports. She has a debuff stack called Weakened. Every time you counter or stagger, her groggy state time increases. It is noticeable at the very end. Occasionally, she focuses on a player. The target mark indicates who is focused. You can intercept this and make sure to not rotate her head too much. The eye marks also indicate who she is going to attack too. She also has a buff stack called Adrenaline. It increases every time she does a normal attack. And beyond 3 stacks, every continuous attack is counterable, so keep an eye on it. She occasionally applies bleed stacks to her attacks too. 10 bleed stacks will cause her to activate her special pattern, where she spins like crazy. She always turns 180 degrees for the counter. Esther meter also fills up extremely fast. You can use up to 5 or 6 times at a given situation. Balthor will also mention that there is an interesting material when you fight her. This is obtained if you kill her adds. This stacks up to 10 and it is crucial for everyone to have at least one stack. Supports only need one, while DPS should have as many as possible. If Esther Balthor is used when everyone has the stacks, boss will enter Endorphin mode, a DPS check mode. Everyone's HP will not go below 1 for 25 seconds, and you will need to drop all of her shields down on time, or your received damage during this phase will be calculated after it's over. This is where Dark Bombs and Atrophins are often used. If you lose your HP to a certain point, there will be ghosts following you. The red moon icon will slowly fill up as you are near the ghosts. If it fills all the way up, you will get mind controlled. At 144 bars, there will be a dialogue and she will teleport to the center. Split up, dodge the tentacles and throw a destruction bomb to destroy the fragments. The more you destroy, the more stagger damage she'll take for the stagger check. Afterwards, there is a time pattern when your game clock reaches around 8 minutes. Her head will get bigger, then she'll dash to grab someone, and then fire cone-shaped tentacles to grab too. If she grabs nobody, she'll end the face, but if she grabs someone, she will keep doing this until she miss. And then when she miss, she will rotate to the next aggro super quickly, then backstep with her tentacles out to counter. If you miss this counter, it's near death damage on normal, instant death on hard. Until 100 bars, every time you counter or stagger her, pay attention to your character. You will have a spike symbol under your feet. Next pattern, the mark player will get beamed and it will have a large explosion. It is crucial to kite this attack to the cracks around the map. They are placed in a triangular formation around the outer rings of the map. If you land this attack to the cracks correctly, you will see red cracks and debris around it. You will need to do this at least twice on the same spot in order for the next mechanic to succeed. Around 100 lines, she will teleport to the center again and the cracks around the map will explode. Make sure to avoid the explosion, it's an instant death. If you have landed the attacks properly, the explosion is significantly bigger, big enough to launch the boss up in the air. If the team has failed to place the attacks on the cracks twice, you must use Esther Balthor to launch her up in the air. The timing is when the boss's dialogue finishes. When this is done, she will drop two tentacles following up with a blue pizza explosion. Circle explosion will also be under your feet. Dodge first, then group up in pairs of two. Then each player needs to throw one destruction bomb to activate the tentacles to bring you up into the air. And when you're doing this, make sure you stand inside a yellow circle. Sometimes you can miss it. Normal has five total, hard has four. My advice is always dodge the blue pizza shaped explosion first because you have plenty of time to group up and get up to safety. At 55 bars, she will do an identical mechanic from 144 bars. Hard mode has different types of orbs though. It is crucial to not destroy the raspberry shaped orbs. Destroying 2 will cause an automatic wipe. Destroying 1 will decrease everyone's stagger by 100% for 15 seconds. If 1 has happened to be destroyed by accident, it is not the end of the world. Patiently wait and destroy stagger when all the debuffs are gone. 
After the cutscene, the stage will change and the eyeball symbols from the ground will slowly chase you. Stepping on them will activate its bite attack and if you get hit by this, your HP will be dropped to the lowest point. Make sure to step on them on purpose to clean them up and not hinder your battle space. At 35 to 34 bars, all eyeball symbols will stop and look in a direction for 8 seconds on the map. And then, the map-wide explosion happen except for the safe spot indicated by the eyeballs. Boss will also do 3 stabbing moves during this trying to kick you out of the safe spot, dodge and stay inside the safety circle. There are 5 ticks to the explosion and each tick will provide a debuff where you take 50% additional damage. Most raid parties use Esther Balthor to force activate Endorphin Phase to completely skip this, but if you ignore the explosion, you will still take the debuff stacks. Raid leader can use Balthor around 38 bars or when the eyeball mechanic starts. On hard mode, there will be one more mechanic, where the map will zoom out and black hole will spawn. The boss will try grab mech again, but she's much faster with two dashes this time. Arms around the edges will try to hurt you as well, and you will need to survive until this is finished. Same rules apply to the grab mechanic when the black hole is over. Just keep in mind that she will dash twice this time. When everything is over, you will just need to drop her HP to zero. Now, let's go over some regular patterns. Generally, G1 normal patterns do not hurt a lot and have a clear red warning signs. As mentioned in the beginning, 10 stacks of bleed will stun you for 10 seconds. If anybody in the team reaches 10 stacks, she will proceed to spin over and over and over in a series of rings. This pattern will repeat indefinitely unless she is countered. Again, she will always rotate where she is facing. So stay behind her to get ready for the counter. This will happen very often towards the end. Lurker. If you see a red Venn diagram, she will dash backwards and proceed to spawn thorns under your feet. This actually kills a lot of people. Make sure to focus on dodging this. Grabbing counter. If the Venn diagram is blue, she will grab players near her and always proceed to counter. Timing is shorter when someone is grabbed. Back grab. She will crouch and shoot yellow warning signs on the back. If anybody is grabbed, she follows up with explosions everywhere. Other patterns like kick attacks and floor swipes have clear red warning signs and they do not do much damage. On hard mode, she sometimes casts the outer ring and gives a pool to a random player. You will just need to place them away from the center. Some patterns in G1 appear very rarely, but some do kill or white parties too. Spear attack. When she changes her hand to spears, she always attacks forward. If you happen to get grabbed, this kills most squishy characters. Transformation. Sometimes she changes her hand to either hammer, spears, or swords. She will do a series of patterns for a long period of time. The spear one, she completely disappears and creates series of circles. This actually kills a lot of people, so make sure to be extra careful if you're experiencing this situation. Support awakening is a good idea too in this case. Reflect. When she wraps her tail around her, this is her reflect pattern. If you don't activate it, she will either jump in the air for a follow-up spinning attacks that you need to dodge, but if you activate it, she will slash 360 degrees in a very large area, killing most squishy people. Even though this is a very rare pattern, it does wipe a lot of parties. If you can react to this as a support, DR and shields can do really good. Shadow. There will be a single blue circle, then the floor will be darkened. You will need to stand behind the friend who is nearest to the initial blue circle. She is counterable after the flash. Grab to stagger. She will dash and grab someone. There will be a stagger check, but failing this has no penalty. For blue line version, make sure to dodge the lines first, then the stagger. When you're in this situation after 55 bars, instead of staggering, make sure to go around and clean up the eyeballs because sometimes the grab players will land on top of the eyeball, the eyeball will do damage, and then they proceed to die. And that actually causes a lot of wipes. Don't move. She will spin twice and jump. From here, you need to stand still to not get frozen. Afterwards, she will grab everyone that is frozen to her and let them go. Most people get hit by this, so you don't have to worry about it too much, unless an eyeball symbol is really close to the boss. Lastly, for general tips and esters. G1 is very forgiving. The highest death rate is destroying the raspberry orb on hard, and the eyeball safe spot mechanic. Not taking care of bleed stacks and not being able to counter her also wipe a lot of parties. Watch out for the lurker pattern by keeping an eye on the red band diagram. You have to know when it's coming. As for esters, since it fills up much faster, always start with Wei as soon as it fills up. Unless the team pushes extremely quick, you can use Esther one more time before the 100 bar mechanic. If you're near 100 bars, make sure to save for Balthor just in case the team fails to land 2 stacks on the cracks. Afterwards, you can either push DPS with Balthor by entering Endorphin mode, but I do recommend keep using Wei or Thyrain to help your team's DPS. 
Note that after the first purple bar stagger, her stagger bar locks up and three red shield icons appear. This indicates she can be applied with destructions to stagger her again. So it is good to use Wade during the stagger bar and Thyrain when red shield icons are present. When faced to 55, always make sure to prepare yourself to use Balthor to add extra layer of insurance to Kuli the Raid. Forcing Endorphin Mode will make you completely safe from the eyeball mechanic if used in the right time. Remember, you need everyone to receive Balthor buff while having at least one stack of buff from the adds. There is also a niche mechanic if you run out of Berserk time. You can extend it while providing buffs to your party. If you stand still long enough, you will receive Noble Sacrifice buff. If you get eaten by the eyeball shape on purpose, you will extend your leftover time and also providing the whole team extra 10% attack power. This was often used during progression when they are about to run out of Berserk time due to your party bits dying or lacking DPS. With that, this concludes Gate 1 of Theamine. Gate 1 is very forgiving and casual. Focus on executing the important parts I mentioned and you won't have any problems clearing it. Good luck everyone, and thank you for all your support. Bye-bye!